All right, welcome to the number four design challenge, which is our typography only poster design. Um, so I'm going to give everybody about two minutes or so to go ahead and join the live video just to uh, give them some time to get into the live video. So this was an, a pretty awesome project we did. Um, I have about, I believe, eight to nine different uh, projects to review that were submitted uh, for this project. So that was really good. This was definitely more of a challenging challenge. I guess the last one was as well when we did the logo design where we combined two different symbols into one. Uh, this was also a, a kind of more of an intermediate to advanced challenge for those with some um, extra design skills. Uh, because when you design a poster without using any time at any type of photography, um, it, it does limit yourself, but it also helps you um, kind of expand your horizons when you only have type to work with. Uh, so it helps you kind of master type uh, to play with it a little bit more um, rather than depending on photos to create a strong design, which I think a lot of designers can do um, if they're not careful as they depend so much on wonderful, beautiful photography uh, that they lose sight of how important typography is in design. So I'm going to uh, one, give one more minute. Um, this is kind of the one that I did. I have a have share class and I also uploaded how I did this in one of my Udemy master classes, the next level class, which is my intermediate um, design course and just kind of um, showed uh, people how I kind of created and my thought process and brainstorming of how I came up with the, with this design. So I'm just going to do another 30 seconds to see. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my other computer to go ahead and click on the live video. So I can kind of see your comments. So I'm just waiting for that to upload and then we can begin. There it goes. Okay, so let me go ahead and pop into here. Now I can see your comments. So please say, hey, if you're here. Um, I know this is not the best time zone for some of you guys. I know I have some people in Australia some people in Asia where you guys are sound asleep. It's 4 a.m. So I know you guys can watch this video later and get a lot out of it. So that's great. But I do love the live component of it where I can have a dialogue with you guys and talk. If you have any questions about anything design related, I'd love to do a Q&A video. Just anything design, freelance, how, to, how to be a freelance designer, how to get clients. I'd love to do a video like that. So if you have any interest on in any of those questions, just please let me know or show some interest or message me and say, hey, that, that's a great idea. I'd love a Q&A time. Hi. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Yay, someone's here. I know it's not the best time zone or time for everybody, but 2 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. for me works out really well in the afternoon. So, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started as people kind of come in. So um, I'm just going to go in order. I open these all in Photoshop. I have my red little marker so I can mark some things, some things up as I make some suggestions. So I'm just gonna move on down the line. Whoever's first is first. And what I tried to do is I looked at these ahead of time, but not for very long, because I wanted to kind of give you a raw first impression instead of looking at it for a long time and developing opinion. I wanted to kind of give you some feedback based on almost me looking at it for the first time. Um, so I haven't like pre, you know, looked at these for too long, just so I don't develop any um, kind of certain reactions already. Okay, so Andy, looks like Andy's up next. So this was submitted uh, in the Skillshare class, and I absolutely love what Andy did. Um, this is one of my favorite ones that I've seen. And I love the use of the texture here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in if I can. That's a beautiful texture. So that was just really well done. And the texture doesn't overpower the design. Um, it plays with it. It doesn't just, it's not screaming at you. It's very subtle, it's very nice. And I love the way he stacked. He has a nice left alignment here. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line. Oh, that's a horrible line. But he has a wonderful left alignment here that looks really strong. Um, it's hard to do a right alignment with this, so he did good by sticking with the left to right natural reading of words. And he did this really neat thing where he has this kind of dot pattern on the inside, and I thought that was really clever, as it pairs really nice with this texture, which is more of a classic, you know, picture of a piece of paper that's brought in. This is more of a pattern, so he's kind of mixing a texture with a pattern and they're both subtle. So none of these are overpowering anything. And so it makes for a nice touch. And I like how he has, he kind of added uh, this little element here um, in the O, I guess speech bubble, almost looks like a speech bubble, so typography. And uh, so he makes this, uh, the way he breaks down 
So right now, the way this reads, it's typo. The, the typography is a strange word, um, but you have certain natural pauses in the word, which is nice breaks in your design. So typography. So he did that not necessarily by leaving the G on the next line, but he left the G there and made it a different color so that you can read this as typo and then graphy. And it has a nice, because um, if he made this the same pattern here, it would be typography and then Rafi, and it just wouldn't read or roll off the tongue when your brain is kind of reading the design. Um, so that was really nice. I like this uh, interesting font choice. I kind of like how the A doesn't have the crossbar. They call this a crossbar in typography terminology, and um, I kind of like how it's not there. It adds kind of an interesting flair. And another thing I like about this is it has this really cool kind of horizontal line right here, and what it does is you have this big gaping hole but what, it, what this line does, it helps kind of close it up into a nice square shape. So that was uh, kind of lovely how that line kind of helped bring the eye in and not have this gaping hole there. So I guess if you like what he's done, he's got his little website here. If you go ahead and zoom in for his sake, like Flamingo, I guess check it out if you like kind of his stuff or if you like, he has an Instagram feed. Okay, so that's really lovely. Thank you so much, Andy, for submitting a project. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and go to the next one, Dia. I don't know if she's here or not. So Dia's next, and usually she was here last time. Or he, I think it's a she. You're a girl, I think. I remember your profile pic, but if I'm wrong, I apologize. Okay, so uh, uh, re I can read this right away. Reuse, reduce, recycle. So it's easy to read, so that's excellent. Um, I do like how you um, since re is in all three words, you're making it really big and you're using it in three instances. Instead of having to repeat re three times, you're saving space by doing that. So that's very clever. Um, maybe just one suggestion is I kind of, um, I would love to see it kind of these three on a left alignment. So maybe if I can just kind of take this tool here, I'm just going to unlock my layer, copy and paste. I know this is probably not the best way to do it, but just kind of having some left alignment kind of help the piece have a little bit better alignment and flow. So kind of having it just like this, maybe putting just a tiny bit more breathing space between the E and the other three um, word chunks would be nice. And I do love your use of the different shades of green, how you have the light, the medium, and the dark. That looks lovely. And you might even want to make that one shade darker, or I am afraid that it might, if you do make it darker, it might blend into the black back, black background. So um, never mind on that one. But I really like this. Very simple. Very simple. And there looks like to be a world in the background, but I can't, I just now realize that that's the globe in the background right here. So you might want to either make that more prominent or zoom in on it. So it takes up the entire um, area and maybe kind of bring that globe out a little bit or eliminate it all together so it doesn't look like it's a watermark or some kind of mistake. But I like it. So thank you so much. Okay. All right. So we have the yoga studio. Okay. So I really like this. Um, so let me kind of, this is kind of my first time, well, I've, I've looked at it previous, but it's my first time really studying the design. And um, I did ask them what program they used. And I think next time I'm going to ask you guys to say what program you use, because I have some students who are in Canva and some students who are in Illustrator and some that like to use a lot of different ones. Um, so this was done in Illustrator. And so I really like this gradient transition. This is called a gradient transition. So you have kind of this slow, and what makes it different than just a regular gradient is a, um, a color transition or a gradient transition is a really subtle transition from one shade to uh, a similar shade next in the color wheel. So it's not a dramatic, it's not like going from yellow fading to purple where it's really dramatic. It's they're next to each other on the color wheel. So it's got this nice fade to it. So I really like that. So that I can definitely tell it's a Y. And I love how she kind of uses, let's see, let me get my little pen or my, um, brush. I like, I like this movement down here of the dates. And I like this font. That's a really nice bold font. I really readable, really lovely. And I like her um, balance. So you'll notice she has this kind of this big object right here that takes up about two thirds of the poster. And then one third is left over for the type. And it has this really nice balance. 
and you have this right alignment down here, which is fine because you don't have you don't have a lot of jagged edges here. So I like this left uh, or this right alignment. And notice how she also has a balance be between her font weights. She, she has this really nice light weight, thin, really thin weight font, and then she has a thicker, bolder weight above it. And, and so it pairs nicely together. They don't compete with each other. Um, I would say, okay, so telephones, so that must be, I'm not sure what country you're in. I know it's a, uh, maybe a European phone number. So if you're on here, maybe you can, okay, she's not on here. Um, just wondering your location. Um, let's see, and we have the website. So go check out our website if you're in near her location. Oh, there we go. Okay, so nine to 12. So I like there's a lot of information packed here and I almost wonder if there's a way to divide this a little bit further. Uh, so you did a good job making this a different color. You really want your website to pop out, but I might even uh, pull this website out and bring it down just a hair to maybe be right here, just to kind of break it up or maybe even put a line and put a little more white space between the two so you can separate maybe the telephone or maybe it right here. That's where you need to do it. Put a little line here and then bring this this these group down just a little bit to break up because you have four different lines of type. So that could kind of bunch up and, and kind of read be too tight together. So finding a way to maybe divide this one more in, in some way, maybe using lines. But I really love this. This is really well done. So awesome. Thank you so much for doing a project. Joanne. Okay, so next. Okay, it's Christy, so I'm not going to save that. Okay, so this one's next, and I think there's two different versions here. So I'm going to go over, I think I'm going to go, this is my favorite one. So I think I'm going to go over this one first. First of all, I love the bold yellow, and it's got a little bit of orange in it. That's lovely. This is a great color. Looks awesome, and it looks really great with that kind of that dark gray. Um, so the overall balance composition is really nice. Um, you have kind of some content right here. But you notice all this generous little white space. Notice how it makes everything look clean and professional, well balanced. It's not pushing all the way out to the edge and you don't feel like it's, it's just taken up every single space. It's nice. And I'm gonna zoom in and look at some of the details. So she kind of, I'm, I'm assuming this was done in Photoshop. I mean, she could have uh, done some masking and, or some clipping masks in Illustrator, but this is probably done in Photoshop. And she has her O kind of behind this object. I know she's technically using a photo, which was, wasn't allowed, but I still really like this poster and I still want to talk about it. Um, and it's kind of hard to say Porsche without having the car there as a visual. So that's one of those little bit of a challenge by doing a type only poster. It does limit you on what you can do. But you have the O behind here, then the R on top. Then notice how the S kind of wraps around. It's behind the glass here, but it's also above the glass here. So it's kind of got that rich layered, playing with the object type effect. It goes all the way down and you have the E down here. I think the only thing I see is I don't know if the photo is cropped this way and you're kind of stuck with that kind of really sharp cropping, but I would somehow fade that into the yellow or maybe find a way to complete the back of that car. Um, you may be stuck, I don't know where you got the photo, but it may be cropped that way and you may be stuck with it like that. Um, and, and there's kind of like an interesting shadow here, but um, I'm being incredibly picky there. I think this is wonderful. And look at this line. I love these lines. I love using lines to break up and block out blocks of typography. So she's using these nice clean lines to break everything up. Notice that's a nice thin body copy weight. And this is a little bit bigger and thicker. So there's balance there between elements. Same thing here. She's using a line to kind of divide this heading and this much smaller body copy weight. So overall, very, very solid and I really like it. And here's the second one, which I'll go over brief, briefly. I don't like this one quite as much. It doesn't have that nice playfulness with the different uh, letters broken up, going down and reading down the object. Um, but I still love the color. I still love uh, kind of, the, I like this kind of um, vertical nature. It's kind of nice. So I'm not sure what the 012 is, uh, what the numbers mean. So maybe those become faded back elements. Maybe you can take that uh, eyedropper tool, highlight this yellow orange and maybe make it a shade darker. So it's very subtle. So it doesn't pop out at you. What pops out you, at you is this Porsche 
and not necessarily the numbers. So this, you have one focal point, which will be Porsche, and this will be subtle background stuff. And yeah, and I would put uh, maybe with this, maybe a little more white space right here. And I guess that rolls off the page, so that's okay. So great. So thank you so much for submitting a project. I'm going to close down both of these and go to the next one. So Nancy's next. All right. So this is, I keep saying well done, but you guys have done really good this round. Um, this is great. And I love how she uses a combination of so many different sizes, weights, colors. She really used it all. And she did this really wonderful job with it. Um, so I'm going to start at the top and kind of work my way down. So I really ha love how she did this W in the white to contrast against the black right here. It's really kind of a nice touch. And I even like how she tucked this little 1915 down there. It's real, real kind of behind the background, but I like it. And this G, the G of this font is very sexy, the lowercase G. So you have this wonderful curves and loops. It's called a loop right here. And that's just, she really kind of highlighted and accented uh, the beautiful lowercase g in this type. And she made that the main focus of the design. So the main focal point is the g. And this is really the main focal point right here in the middle, which talks about um, what uh, typeface, is it, typeface it is. That's wonderful sense of having that nice, easy to find focal point. And I love your colors. I love how you paired kind of the cool colors with a warm color. And that's really refreshing. And I like the two-tone here. You have a little lighter tone here and you have a little darker tone here. And you have all the entire alphabet all the way kind of down, down this way. There's a little bit of maybe some spacing. I know when you do, um, I know she probably did this in Illustrator and did kind of a stroke right here. And then she went back and put in type into the stroke. And I know sometimes when it follows the line of the stroke, it can kind of have some awkward breaks when you have sharp, like she probably has a line that goes like this. And then the type on path tool, it just has awkward breaks sometimes right there. It's not like a smooth rounded one. So that's not necessarily her fault. Sometimes you have to manually kind of tweak it. Same here, have kind of a little bit of an awkward uh, break there, but I'm being so picky. Uh, this is wonderfully done. And I like the little eye there. So you can have some references. So she did good with her copywriting and references. And I love how she did uh, the type here, how it kind of moves. It's not just a block, but it kind of moves around the curves of the G. So thank you so much, Nancy. This was, this was really, really excellent work. So thank you so much for submitting a project. All right, next is Sandra. Okay, so Sandra. Um, so I think this is one of the first projects that was submitted. Um, so first of all, I really like this watercolor kind of texture. It's really playful. This is a very playful piece. And so I like the playfulness of it. And I like how she mixes different typefaces. She has uh, different typefaces. She has a serif font. And she kind of have a, a decorative, I guess this would technically be a serif because there's these little loops at the end but it's kind of a slab. It's a slab serif. So it's a little bit different than a traditional serif that's up here. So this is a slab and this is a tr traditional serif. So I like kind of the font mixing and then you kind of have an italics here. So the whole mixture of different um, words and types kind of helps it uh, read less like a, just a boring sentence, but more of a dynamic piece. Um, the only, maybe uh, a little bit of a critique is I have a hard time with drop shadows on dark type. Um, I usually only use it for white type or a lighter type. So sometimes when you have drop shadows on dark, since the drop shadow is dark and it's on dark type, it tends to kind of make it look blurry rather than a drop shadow. So I usually try to stay away from uh, really dark text having dark shadows. So I'd probably just maybe remove it or lighten it, maybe go back and uh, to your transparency settings and cut it in half. If it's set to 50%, set it to 25%, just make it just enough so it pops out on the background, which is why you added the drop shadow to begin with. Um, and so I like this little creative little eye she put here with the uh, flower, so that's a nice touch. So I like the font pairing. I would probably, um, here, white space is your friend for sure. So I would just add a little white space here so it's not touching since these are different typefaces. 
I would uh, let them breathe a little bit more. So adding a little, I know I, I sound like a broken record saying white space, white space, <laughs> but just a little there and maybe just a little here. I know you have these touching, but since they're different typefaces, I would probably suggest keeping them a little bit separated. If they were the same typeface, I'd say, yes, maybe you can play with joining the strokes together. And I, I could, you'd be, an easy way to solve it is just maybe um, tighten the um, kerning between the spacing here, and then that'll naturally give you some more space here and here. Because there's a little bit of a, I have a hard time adding big gaps between lowercase characters. Sometimes it's hard to do. But lovely work. Thank you so much, Sandra. Okay, Uma is next. Okay, so um, she did use a photo. She used a couple of photos, and she uh, said, or he, I have to go back and look. Um, <laughs> um, they did say they were going to um, resubmit one, but I, I did not see one before I did the video, but I'm just going to go ahead and add some critiques. And I think she said she was going to, uh, or he, I have to look at the profile pic um, and see if they were going to um, resubmit it after critique. So here we go. I like the presentation on the mock-up. I'm a big fan of showing a design on a mock-up. I think that's cool. Um, so I think this is one I used in one of my classes. Uh, for a poster design. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. So in terms of balance, um, the balance is good. Um, you do have some nice white space here and here. And you have kind of a very obvious headline that is very readable. You have a nice yellow type that reads nicely with the uh, background. So the background's not overpowering. That's great. Um, I do think the font choice is interesting. Um, you kind of have a lowercase and then a, decor a different decorative font being used. And so, um, uh, let's see. So I think, I don't know. I think I think I might do a all caps, and not do the lowercase, or use a lowercase. I know exactly what you're trying to do because that's a, kind of a style where you use different. You use a lowercase capital letter, and then you use all caps. But I think it might be nice to. Uh, I kind of like this font instead, whatever typeface that's used instead of this one. I know this all caps. It's kind of boring uh, compared to kind of this fun kind of script font, but awesome. Um, so we have kind of this overarching uh, kind of join and enjoy kind of ribbon. And I would kind of make sure your ribbon kind of goes skinnier here. And a, usually a ribbon is the same width throughout. So I might want to maybe kind of correct that a little bit and just kind of have kind of a more even ribbon and I'm horrible at drawing with the mouse. So kind of get the idea. So I like this photo, but my challenge to you is to do this same poster or maybe even do a different type of poster, but without using photography. So the texture of space background is totally usable. So I like this little background. So go ahead and use that, but see if you can find a way to arrange kind of the activity events, help and I'm not sure what that, that word, party, if you can arrange those letters without um, using the, the, the people jumping. And I know that'll be a definite challenge for you, but then we can kind of critique, critique it a little bit later. But I think last but not least is going to be Andre. Okay, so this is a very, uh, I like this because it's, it's contemporary. It's also retro in terms of like de art deco or like a very simplistic uh, this is actually, I can tell you, this is Helvetica New, because I know my type. I know my Helvetica. I think this is Helvetica New. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, Andre. Um, but I do kind of, it almost looks like it would make a really great screen print, because it uses only three three ink colors. So this would make a really cool, like, t-shirt design, because you only have the three ink colors, and just kind of the way they have these nice, bold lines. Uh, it would make a cool t-shirt. So I think the only criticism I really have, it's really uh, simple, clean. Uh, there's not a lot of negatives to say about it. I'm not a big fan of this little thin line. So what I might even do is kind of, because I like these big, bold shapes, and the thin line kind of breaks those nice, bold shapes, um, that kind of theme. So what I would do is select inverse and see if I couldn't kind of get rid of that line. Oh, I did a content fill. Ha, huh, now that looks strange. Let me fill that in with like a gray. Let's do a new layer. Maybe even do a white because I love the stark white with the bold color, something like that. So there, there's still like a little line there, but kind of get the idea. 
Oh boy. Okay. There we go. Got to love it when you're doing this live, but you get the idea. Kind of getting rid of that thin line kind of keeps those nice chunky shapes together and it looks great. So I don't really have any other comments because I really like it. I like how these kind of connect here. Um, typography and it's spelled correctly. I misspelled uh, the first time I did a type type only poster. I, I forgot the, um, I think I forgot the P or some really critical letter. I was like, oh, I can't believe I did that. So he spelled it right. <laughs> so good job, Andre. So I'm just going to check back the comments. Um, I'm just checking some other things. Just making sure I, I saw someone make a comment, but I just want to make sure that wasn't one of my students making a comment. Okay, so let me, uh, I'm just going to pop into, do my little plug now. Um, so uh, a lot of you guys are students on Udemy or Skillshare of my classes. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed kind of the community that we've built on Facebook, please leave a review on my Udemy classes or Skillshare classes. It really helps get my name out to other students so we can invite them to the community and have more designers submit uh, challenges so we can continue to do this and have fun. Uh, so this is my Udemy kind of page. So if you take any of these classes, I would love a review. Uh, same thing goes to Skillshare. I'm also in a lot of you guys are Skillshare subscribers. I have a new class coming out soon with Canva, uh, creating your own uh, branding, uh, business branding. So social media, local design, mood boards, it's all going to be in Canva. So any of my Canva students, uh, you might be interested in that. But yeah, go check out my latest courses on Skillshare. Love reviews on Udemy and Skillshare, that's my little shameless plug. But I want, let me go ahead and get back to here. Uh, so now it's time for the next challenge. And I know this was, I did a poll and this was number one. And this was a really great, um, I'm glad you guys picked this one because this was fun. But I want to do something that's going to be good for all levels of um, designers. So beginner levels as well as advanced. And I think the second place winner in that poll was creating a mood board Canva. So the next challenge and this is going to be, uh, I'll post a little bit more about it in the middle of the week to give you more information. I'm still kind of nailing down the details, but it's going to be creating um, a mood board and color palette for a personal brand. Um, so your personal brand, you're a freelance designer, maybe you work at a firm, maybe you're a web designer, whatever you do is going to be a freelance um, mood board slash color palette development. So that'll be the fifth design challenge. So that'll be fun. Great. Okay. Watch the video. After you get, okay. Great. Yeah. I know a lot. I know this is probably not the best time of day. I know I didn't get a lot of you live, but that's okay because I know I get at least 200 views on this um, throughout time or throughout the week after posting it. Um, so I know you guys are watching it. So thank you guys for tuning in. So I'm going to go ahead and check out and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed kind of the critiques. This is a fun project and I cannot wait to do uh, challenge number five. So once again, leave a review in any of my classes if you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to the next challenge. Thank you guys. Love you all.